Welcome to Elon Musk's Signal Channel. Starship Flight 4, we have witnessed a spectacular launch and landing of both the Starship and its booster. What extraordinary events will unfold on the fifth flight? Every advancement by SpaceX is sure to leave us in awe. What do you think about the recovery of the massive Super Heavy booster? This visionary plan is set to begin with the fifth flight, where a giant booster will return to the launch pad and be captured by the chopstick mechanism. In today's video, join us as we uncover the secrets behind Mechazilla's arm, explore SpaceX's breakthrough improvements, and learn how Mechazilla can capture the super heavy monster. Let's dive right in. Just a year ago, SpaceX was still diligently repairing and upgrading Starship after its maiden flight. However, through relentless efforts, Hack they managed to conduct three more test flights. A recent fourth flight was a monumental breakthrough marking the first time a Starship rocket completed the entire journey. Launch, ascent to high altitude, and landing at sea. But Elon Musk has much bigger ambitions. Capturing the Starship rocket using the chopstick system. Imagine the challenge SpaceX faces. Controlling a gigantic rocket moving at extremely high speeds, guiding it precisely to its intended location, and executing the delicate capture maneuver with millimeter precision. Compared to conventional landings, this technique requires more complex calculations, faster responses from control systems, and above all, absolute reliability of the chopstick. SpaceX's fifth flight will be a significant milestone, aiming to capture the booster using the chopstick system at Starbase. This upcoming flight promises to be incredibly dramatic. The objective is clear, but how will the landing unfold? After separating from the main spacecraft, booster will autonomously navigate towards the support tower with its catching arms. Following the outlined scenario, around three minutes into the journey, the detachment process will commence. In previous flights, the sea landing process took an additional four minutes, totaling seven minutes and 22 seconds. However, this time, the return journey to Starbase for the booster will be longer, involving additional maneuvers. It is estimated that the landing process could take over 10 minutes post-launch. This also poses immense challenges requiring perfect control. Key factors include deceleration and orientation. In a recent flight, both systems performed admirably. The stabilizing fins remained intact post-landing, despite a central engine malfunction. This demonstrated deceleration from 12,200 km per hour to about 10 km per hour in just 20 seconds. However, the task of capturing the booster with chopsticks demands even greater accuracy. Despite effective engine braking, many experts argue that 9 km per hour is still too fast for a safe landing onto the chopsticks. SpaceX needs to address the engine issue definitively. Recent engine failures post-launch and landing may stem from overheating and frequent on-off cycling of the landing engines. A recent engine failure causing a fire near the water surface serves as evidence. Although this did not affect other engines, it remains a critical issue to resolve urgently. SpaceX's upcoming mission demands flawless coordination between the booster and the chopstick system. The booster must fly accurately towards Starbase, decelerate, and orient precisely. The chopstick system below will open up, creating an ideal space for the booster to fly into, then close to secure and lower it. Thrusters will adjust the booster's position. And finally, chopsticks will rotate and place the booster onto the launch mount, completing the mission. However, unexpected situations can always arise. According to Elon Musk, the success rate for the upcoming test flight is only 50%. SpaceX has certainly prepared for unforeseen circumstances. If any issues are detected with the booster, it will autonomously abort into the sea for safety. Conversely, if all goes smoothly, the booster will autonomously return to the launch pad and be captured by the chopsticks. Regarding contingency landing sites, SpaceX may choose the farthest offshore area possible to minimize impact on humans and wildlife. This area will be clearly communicated via maritime channels prior to launch. Despite its ambitious nature, the success of the fourth flight has bolstered confidence in SpaceX's ability to land using chopsticks. However, doubts persist. Many experts believe that successfully landing both stages of the rocket depends heavily on completing SpaceX's new launch tower. The rationale behind this viewpoint is understandable. With separate towers for each stage, 
process of capturing and securing them would be more efficient. Additionally, SpaceX would have more time to inspect and prepare for each launch. The new launch tower also serves as a backup plan in case the current one encounters serious malfunctions. However, there's another perspective to consider. Despite supporting the idea of two launch towers, effectively capturing the booster with the current launch tower may still be achievable. Firstly, the upcoming mission focuses solely on the booster, not the entire rocket. Secondly, potential issues could stem from various factors, not solely from the launch tower. Compared to other systems, Chopsticks has demonstrated high reliability through stable operations in the stack and destack missions of the fourth flight. Elon Musk has also stated that the current launch tower is capable of withstanding thousands of landings, reinforcing confidence in its ability for this mission. Nevertheless, the new launch tower offers long-term benefits, but for the upcoming booster capture, current launch tower may suffice. Here are a few reasons supporting this perspective. Firstly, the construction timeline for the new launch tower may face delays. Currently, the last two segments of the tower and the chopstick system are en route to Texas. It will take several weeks to bring them to the assembly area. Based on previous construction histories, nearly a year, completing the new launch pad could extend by four to five months. Secondly, SpaceX's fifth test flight, Flight 5, is scheduled for July, just a month away from now. While there might be some minor delays, they are not significant. Thirdly, a recent decision by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, not to investigate the incident in the fourth flight indicates that Flight 5 could proceed smoothly with just one launch tower. True to SpaceX's style, such obstacles will not affect the overall schedule. SpaceX remains committed to achieving the goal of fully reusable rockets this year. It seems that building the new launch tower would be more sensible starting from Flight 6, when both stages of the rocket return to Starbase. We can fully trust the brilliant minds at SpaceX. The challenge of landing the booster using chopsticks has been meticulously calculated for a long time. Despite the difficulties, SpaceX has laid a solid foundation to turn this into reality. And that wraps up today's program. Let's continue to follow SpaceX's exciting events in their journey to conquer space. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and like it if you found the content help. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to await more fascinating videos on Elon Musk's signal. Goodbye and see you next time.